So, we're here this afternoon with David Cuthbertson, Head of Science here at Great Valor. Afternoon, David. Good afternoon, Matt. We, we need to apologise a little bit for the colourful clothing. It's Express Yourself Day here at school as part of the Children's Mental Health Week. However, David doesn't need to apologise because he always looks like this. You are definitely one of the more colourful teachers in school, David. I do like to be expressive. We're here in the lab, David. Science, your passion. So, why is it? I mean, it, I have to say, it's always clear that it's a subject that you love. It's a clearly a subject that children love. The fun is really evident. Why is it such an important subject? Science is super important because it, it tells children about the world. It tells children what's going on in the world now, what's going to go on in the world in the future, and how the past has shaped that. So, if they can do hands-on experiments to find out about the world themselves, that's what science is all about. And my job here is, is to make them, or to help them, to be interested, to be enthusiastic, and to be curious. And if they can be that, then I'm happy. Thinking about that, that's something you want to see as a subject that relates to the world, relates to the broader curriculum. We talk a lot about STEM subjects. I mean, how do you see science um, working in a cross-curricular way in school? So we already do a lot of work with technology and engineering mathematics through science. Um, I'd really like um, to look at STEAM as well, to get art in there with, with science as well, because it does fit with everything. So a lot of cross-curricular stuff with geography, and um, we've both been volcanoes, but we do it in a slightly different way. If we can get together to do that, that'd be amazing. But it, it fits with PE, it fits with English, it fits with everything. I suppose when we talk about the pandemic that we've been living through as well, there are things that we've learned in the way we teach, learned about education, but I suppose the pandemic of all things relates to science. Have there been lessons that you've been able to teach through the pandemic? The strides that science has made during the pandemic time have been so fast and so quick that children have looked at it and gone, wow, science is amazing. These scientists are incredible people and they know that they can be those people too. Obviously a big year coming up for Great Ballard because we're accepting Year 9 for the first time. It will be a big year for you too because a new role in that part Absolutely. of the school. So you're taking on a particular responsibility for curriculum as we move through to GCSE. So can you give us even an insight into how our curriculum will be different? What are we aiming to do here that maybe other schools can't do? What we can do here is we can use our grounds, we can use our facilities, we can use our expertise and the time that we've got to develop the curriculum and to go deeper into the curriculum than, than I've ever done at secondary school. I've taught in secondary schools for a long time and I haven't been able to dig down. It's been, we must do this curriculum quickly, we must get these exams right and we're going to do that, of course we are, but we can have more time to enjoy the science and to dig deep into the science so the children can really absolutely get their hands on it. You've mentioned the, the, the beautiful location we have, the site we have, which is a great thing. But we also sometimes talk about that feeling a little bit like a bubble, in the sense that it's beautiful, but it's off the beaten track, we enjoy the safety of it. How will the curriculum through to 16 embrace the real world, and maybe not just in science, but across all subjects? What have we got to do to keep this curriculum relevant? What we're going to be doing is linking science at Great Ballard to the greater world. I'm looking at links to local industry, I'm looking at links to local farming. We've got lots of farms on our doorsteps so we can go and work there. I'm looking at work experience, I'm looking at integrating the Duke of Edinburgh Award into science as well. I'm working with the NFU at the moment, National Farmers Union. They've got a great big STEM project going. So we can link all those things around the place and get out. Yes, it's a bubble, it's a beautiful bubble, and yes, it's a safe place to teach. But if we want children, if we want our young people to expand their, their outlook on, on life and on science, we need to get out there, and that's what we're going to do. David, you, you mentioned that most of your career has been in secondary schools, and, and mostly secondary state. I think this is your first independent school. It is indeed, yeah. I remember first meeting you, and you were very, very full of the fact that here you've been able to do things you hadn't been able to do before, and you're a colourful character with lots of interests. Tell us about some of the interest that you've been able to bring to this school that you couldn't perhaps have done elsewhere. Some of the things we've done here, um, there's a mountain bike club here. Um, we're building a mountain bike trail in the grounds. Um, there's a radio control club. We do a STEM club after school as well. Uh, we do science clubs after school. Just things like a walk in the grounds. I took my form fives for a walk in the grounds and I found a deer skeleton, which they then picked up and looked at and looked at Mr. Cuthbert's and a skull which amazed me. So that, I've never been able to do it before. I've always been rigidly teaching science 
I now do a bit of rugby coaching as well, so I'm a happy man to be fair. And um, how will pastoral care be different in that new senior school? So, pastoral care here is different to a secondary school in that we know all the children. No one's invisible, nobody disappears, they're all individuals. I know everybody here, they all know me and I know their family. And that's a lovely thing, we can tailor our care, whereas the places I've worked before, we can't do that. We can pick up on certain individuals. Here we pick up everybody. And to me, that, that's the crux of what teaching is about. And I can think of some obvious examples there, David, of you meeting your class online at the moment every single week, and individual tutorials with students as well, making sure you keep uh, touching base with them. And also, I know the other day, actually, even visiting the house of somebody who you were concerned about, which was going above and beyond. I did, I did a socially distanced home visit, and actually, they were a little bit concerned, and I was able to, to lay those concerns to rest just, just by going there, just by spending 10 minutes. And it was one of the nicest things I've done this term. Lovely. And I think teaching is about building relationships, which you clearly you know, see as a big part of it, achieving in the classroom, is building the relationship behind them. I think it's a massive part. I think if the children are happy, are happy to be taught, then they'll learn. Okay, so David, to end all our interviews, we play a bit of a game. So I hope you're ready for this. Okay. So this is a game of Would You Rather. So some 50-50 scenarios for you. Not too much thinking, but you can explain them if you want to. So uh, would you rather be able to talk with animals or speak a foreign language? No, I'd definitely rather be able to talk to animals. Man. A science teacher's answer, I would say. Would you rather um, lose your vision or lose your hearing? As somebody who's really badly short-sighted, I really value my vision, so I'd rather lose my hearing. And uh, would you rather um, be reading a great book or watching a great movie? Great book every time. Oh, that was quick. Best book you've read lately? Best book lately is Dirt Jenny's Holistic Detective Agency, which uh -huh. is the Douglas Adams. Um, would you rather explore space or the bottom of the ocean? Space. Thank you very much. My first memory is the moon landing. I would love to go to space. Would you rather sing like Pavarotti or cook like Jamie Oliver? I'm quite a good cook, actually, and I've got some of Oliver's cookbooks, so singing like Pavarotti would be great. So you could sing like Pavarotti while cooking, like yeah, Jamie Oliver. That would be amazing. Perfect combination. And finally, then, a superhero question, or a superpower question. Would you rather be able to fly or to be invisible? I would definitely rather be able to fly. Invisibility is a little bit creepy. Excellent. Brilliant answer. Well, thanks very much, David. My pleasure. Thank you.